So, hi everyone. <laughs> Let me show you where we're at here. There we are, look at that, Yamaha. <laughs> All right, do you see me? We're here, we're, we're just uh, in the midst of a huge storm here. Summer has arrived in South Florida, it's really dark outside. Can you see me? <laughs> Hi. Tell me if you can see me. Okay, all right. So we just had a great big uh, crash of lightning and the and, uh, all the yeah we've got thunder out there now, Steve. So uh, yeah, the lights just flickered in this place. So I think we lost Wi-Fi, but uh, we're here at Piano Distributors in Jupiter. Um, I was amazed to walk in here today and find <laughs> a lot of pianos have gone, which is a good thing. Um, but Steve's here. Hey, Steve, come on. You can see everyone here. Hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so Steve's here. You remember Steve from the last time um, that we were on here. Um, we've also got Vanessa here. She's going to be mon monitoring the comments and the questions. And so um, what we want to do today is to show you a little bit about um, used pianos and, and you know what to look for when looking for a used piano and the differences between used pianos. That's a good thing to, to do, guys, right, Steve. Right. Yeah. So. Um, we're going to take you around the store and um, just let everybody join because I know that, uh, yeah, you can go oh, loose is saying hi, Steve. <laughs> let's turn the camera around and let's show you a little bit of stuff here. Um, for those of you that weren't on the live stream with us the last time that we were here, we've got everything from digital clavin overs, digital Yamaha pianos to uh, acoustic grands and acoustic uprights. So, uh, Welcome everyone, we've got 21 people in here, we've got nine likes already, so hit that like button. So this is um, on Indian Town Road in Jupiter, so we've got all of these used pianos over here, we've got uprights, and then in here we have the room where we've got a Bosendorfer right here. Uh, this is um, set up for Disclavia TV, which is really, really cool. I don't think we can do that, Steve, because the copyright claims. Um, and then there's a piano there, which is, again, a Yamaha Disclavia. And then down here, we got more acoustic grands. Oh, I just knocked the, the camera. This is your concert grand, Bosendorfer. Look at the size of that. Huge, huge. And then around here, we got even more product. And we're going to show you a little bit of this one. It's pretty cool. Steve, shall we start them off on this? Sure. Tell us a little bit about this model. So this is the Yamaha N3X of Grand, And it's, it's what we call in our industry a hybrid piano. And we call it a hybrid because it is digital in terms of sound. However, in terms of playing, it has an authentic grand piano action inside of it. So it's got all of the levers and all of the wooden parts that a traditional acoustic piano would have, but the benefits, or not necessarily benefits, but just the features of being digital. So no tuning, you can use headphones, you know, interface with the computer, all that sort of thing. Um, or maybe you live somewhere where a piano tuner just isn't available, <laughs> you know, <laughs> right? but you play piano well and you want that feel, um, and this can be a, just a great alternative for you. The sound is amazing because it's recorded from a Yamaha Concert Grand, so the CFX Concert Grand. Wow. Very dynamic in terms of Yeah, yeah, you then, see that. Mellow. Opens up the timbre. And you strike the keys harder. It has pedaling just like a grand piano. Yeah. Um, this is an expensive digital piano, but that's because it's very high end and good. And so I feel. And there are no cool. strings in here, right? There no are strings no strings. 
no strings attached. <laughs> so all the speaker system in here is yeah. all, look at this, it's 11 beautiful, amplifiers. right? 11 amplifiers. 11. Yeah, and as a matter of fact, these speakers are located, this is interesting, where the microphones were placed on the, on the Yamaha CFX concert grant. Wow. When they recorded the piano sound and took the samples. Amazing. So it's got that spectrum of tone, just like the CFX. It even has a feature called tactile response, which sends, there's, there's microphones inside of the piano that are recording the tone inside, and it sends vibrations to your fingers. Get out. And pedals. Really? Just like an acoustic piano. Wow. So the engineers, I call it a digital piano on steroids. Yeah, yeah. So it's just kind of over the top. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. It's got a little um, a sample, right? It's got a demo song. It does. So let's see here. What do you think, guys? What do you think? You have complete volume control. Yeah, yeah. Right. Wow. There's a lot of people saying it's awesome. Cool. Vuk and Louis are saying, but it's a great sound. There's other tones too. Yeah. Um, for example, that was CFX, but then if I hold the voice button. Go to sound number two. Now I'm playing that Busendorfer. The one, the concert grand. So you hear a different timbre of sound? Yeah, definitely. Richard Johnson asking for the retail and price on that. And what model is it again? It's called an N3X. N N3X? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's the latest edition of the product. Uh, retail's 19000 Wow. It's up there. So it's it's not for that customer that's looking for an inexpensive digital piano. Right, right. Because in some cases, it costs more than some of our grand pianos. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So there it is, folks. Let me, let's show you what's going on outside. Look at this. This is, <laughs> there's no wonder we lost Wi-Fi. Look at this. Oh, you can see me there. It is blowing up a storm out there. Almost like a mini hurricane, Steve. Perfect. It's unbelievable. <laughs> All right, let's see, let's see some of these grand pianos. These, uh, cause you, you get a, um, a few grand pianos coming in here. Yeah, part exchange and you can sign stuff. And well, we have trade pianos that are traded in. Being in Florida, we have a lot of movement of folks in terms of moving here <clears throat> yep. or moving, you know, back home to be with family. Yeah. So because of that, their their, you know, pianos become available and we can sign. Yeah. Many of them as well, and then of course we have our new product from Yamaha. And yeah. And there's a lot of different variables, right, with pianos, mm -hmm. grand pianos, and yes. acoustics. Yeah. So uh, let's let's go take a walk down here. <laughs> Wow, it really is blowing up a storm. And uh, guys, if you have any questions or anything, write them down on the, uh, the, the chat here. We've got Vanessa that's uh, writing down questions and we're gonna get to some answers a little bit later on. So I see we're in, so, we're in front of a piano right here. So, yeah. uh, so, you know, the brand really isn't that important when you're right. thinking about, you know, a modestly priced pre-owned piano. It's more about location, location, location. Where was the piano? How was it used? Was it used? Um, right. Was it tuned? Was it serviced regularly? All those kind of things. And, um, you know, my thought would be if, if I was buying a pre-owned piano, I would want to just look it over carefully. Right. And there's some things to look for, um, such as, you know how a piano works, correct? We, Strike a string or a pint, strike a key. Yep. Hammer, the hammer strike the strings. 
these dampers come up off the strings to let it sing. You let go of the key, it comes back down. So for example, it's important that all those dampers are working correctly. Okay. It's important that you play every key on the piano yep. and that there's a consistent tone. No sticking. No sticking, <laughs> right? It's important that you play the pedals and that they're actually right. operating. Yeah. And a lot of folks, let's see what, so right pedal is sustained. All the dampers are off the strings. Left pedal on a grand piano actually moves the keyboard. Right. So the hammers come up. Ooh and hit less of the strings and create a softer sound. Yeah. And the middle pedal, let's see what we have here. Yeah. yeah. So this is a sostenuto pedal. Yeah. So it allows you to play any group of notes, then push the pedal down. Those dampers stay up in the air, off the strings, and other right. notes placed just traditionally. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Not used a whole lot, but... No, I, I never use it. No. You kind of find ways to use it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, unless you're playing at that high level where you actually do <laughs> intend to <laughs> right, use it. Right, right. But, you know, this is an example of a pretty, <laughs> very honestly, a dirty piano. Um, you can see that liquid is spilled oh, on the can. sounding board. We haven't touched this instrument. It just came in. Um, you can see that. If you look down below... At the hammers, you can see some liquid has spilled onto those as well. So that's kind of a red flag that, you know, why did that happen? Was it in a nightclub? Was it in a right. home with a lot of, you know, just not a lot of tender care? It looks like it's, piano. it looks like it's very dusty too in there. It's dusty. Cleaning a sounding board is not easy for the average person because there's tools that you need right, to get right. under the string. And, and a few marks on here mm -hmm. as well. But, so the things I would think about are, how does it feel? Yeah. You know, is it nice to play? Do all the keys work? Do, do the pedals work? Yeah. Then how is tuning stability? And how do you know? Well, a technician can take a wrench to tuning pins and check their tightness. Right. So I think that's something you want to make sure that happens. A sounding board is curved. It's actually concave. And the reason it's concave in the and it's up in the center is that it vibrates better that way. Okay. And if it vibrates, it creates a bloom of tone. If it doesn't vibrate, tone dissipates. Okay. So you want to listen for that as well. And that that curve is held by wooden um, ribs that hold that curve over time. But the problem with buying a very old used piano is you reach the point where you can't that, that board is no longer curved, it's flat. Oh, okay. So the tone is just uninspiring because of that. Um, what's the age on this? This is you, about 40 years old. 40 years old, and, and what's the brand? Uh, it's a Chickering, which back 40 years oh, ago- Oh, Chickering. Was a decent okay. piano company, yeah. American built. Um, there were hundreds of piano companies at that time, right here. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, that's all changed. That's a whole nother show. Um, but, so at any rate, the fact that it's a, it's a chick ring is not really good or bad. It's right. all about condition. Yeah, exactly. You know, So this is a grand piano, folks. It's used. It's, uh, it's in the show. Yeah, baby grand piano. So we've got Richard Johnson just asked a question um, about a, a 635 Clavinova. <laughs> and he's saying if he were to upgrade, what would be the model? And is it worth upgrading? Well, the next model, when the 635 was made, is a 645. Okay. And the 645 has wooden keys, so it has a little different feel to it, um, especially when you hit, hit down on the key, you can just feel a little more substantial uh, authenticity. Yeah. Um, amplification's greater, so it can play fuller at a lower volume. The sampling ratio, when they recorded, is a higher grade, so you hear more expression. So... That would be the first jump. And there is a few other differences like Bluetooth and just other features. But okay. Those are the biggest things. But today, you would actually consider a 745, which is the new version of the 645. And it has all the features the 645 had, but it has an improved action. It just keeps getting better. Yeah, better. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hope that answers your question. Um, 
do they change all the strings on those? I guess you don't, right, on you these really, used? So the, the problem with pre-owned pianos is you have to look at what it sells for, look at, you know, it would be wonderful to rebuild it. However, you know, before you know it, you could easily spend $10,000. Absolutely, cost prohibitive, right? On a $3,000 retail piano. Right. So if this was a really fine Yamaha, a Steinway, a high-end piano, then because of what it's gonna sell for, there is always that opportunity. Yeah. Um, by the way, getting back to the Clavinova yeah. question, you can go higher as well. So above the 745 is a 765 mini grand, 775, 785, and it's all about tone. It's just like going to the different size grand pianos. You know, if the quality is the same, every time you jump to the next size, Very cool. it's gonna be <clears throat> even better. So something like this, Steve, it's, it's obviously it's on the showroom floor, so you decided that this was, you know, worth selling, right? I mean, what kind well, of... Well, we're going to clean it and just do what we can with yeah, it, but yeah. probably sell it as is in terms of... We're not going to do a lot of refurbishment to it, and it's yeah. a $2,000 piano. $2,000 piano, there you go, for a baby grand, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. The biggest advantage to the customer over an upright piano is the action. Yeah. So you're going to get the grand piano action with better repetition and better control. Yeah, exactly. So um, we've got another question here. Uh, Kawhi Baby Grand's reliable and would you advise buying one? And I think we've got one, right? We've got a larger one. Yes, definitely. It's a yeah. very good instrument. So cool. right here we've got, that's a... That's a probably 40 year old. Is seven, it really? Seven foot Kawhi. Get yeah. out. Yeah, it's a, this is a big piano. Yeah. Um, Um, the two, 40 years old. Mm -hmm. Which is just, it, it shows you if you take care of an instrument, how long it will last and still sound good. Yeah. It's an investment. It's not a, it's not really a money investment, but it's, it's an investment in music over time. And straight away you can see looking in this, even though it's 40 years old, you know, I mean, it's in pretty good shape. The strings look awesome and so does the soundboard. So Yamaha and Kawhi are the two big players from Japan. They've both been in the piano industry a long, long time, and they've proven their worth. Yeah. What's the price on this, he's saying, he's asking? Uh, 13,900. 13,900 for a 40-year-old 40, 40 seven-foot, right? Mm -hmm. But new, it would be a sixty, seventy thousand dollars piano. Amazing, isn't it? It really is amazing. So what else have we got, Steve? Um, Yamaha GH1, five foot three. This shows you, um, this shows you a piano that was was cared for. This one. This was in a nice home. Yeah. It was serviced regularly. It was cleaned by the technician over time. You know the the keyboard is very nice and consistent. Another test for a pre-owned piano is the action. You want to make sure you can play. So you just want to make sure it has that dynamic expression. Yeah, yeah. And it's a very matte finish as well, mm -hmm. this isn't it? This is called satin ebony. S satin ebony. Yeah. yeah. It started off being shiny, but at the factory, they kept buffing. Oh, really? Yep. Is that what they do? Yeah, it, all Look the panels that. they make are shiny. It's just buffed down to be satinized. You can really see that from the lighting here. What was that, Vanessa? How long do strings usually How long do strings last on a piano? I think a lot of it is about wear. Um, but let's just, for a normal, just for a piano in a normal home being played by hobbyists, yeah. it'll la they'll last a lifetime. Yeah. You know, which to me would be 40, 50 years. Yeah. If it was in a school, though, it was played eight hours a day, every day, it, you know, it's probably 10 years. It, it, I think it depends as well on, on the humidity, right, yeah. and the, uh, mm -hmm. the aerodynamics of your room, and yeah, because yeah. that can rust strings and make them look like right. untunable. But the copper wound strings, the bass strings, lose their resilience over time. So they, right. they don't vibrate the same way. So you've heard, I'm sure, sometimes on playing an old piano, you hit a bass note and it just goes thump. Yes. You know, it doesn't I've, really... I've, I've played plenty of pianos <laughs> like that. So that's just because the, 
the, the copper has failed yeah. and the string's not vibrating like it should. Amazing. You have a lot of used pianos. Well, I guess, you know, I never have enough. <laughs> I never, but, um, you know, one thing about the times we're living in right now is playing piano is very popular. It is. And people are at home. Um, yeah. Adults. Yeah. You know, and they're yearning to get back to that love of music that they had when they were younger. So there's that going on. Yeah. And then parents are looking for really solid activities for kids that since they're at home more. Yeah, yeah. And piano can certainly be one of those. Yeah. And, and then, there, then there's just us crazy guys and gals <laughs> I just know. love jamming on piano. I know, mm -hmm. I know. And uh, I'm going to turn the camera around to me, but because I've just been, uh, you know, on my channel, um, a lot of people, you know, I, I learned piano when I was a kid. You know, I was what, six, seven years old, you know, when I started playing. And, you know, life gets in the way, right? You get, I had lessons until being about 14 years old. Um, and then, you know, you end up getting a job and you end up getting a family and you end up um, not playing as much. You know, I remember that the piano that I have had at home, I, I didn't play it, what, for two years? Three years, mm -hmm. something like that, um, so, and I'm finding a lot of these people that are watching me on YouTube. You know, same thing. They're, I'm 50. I'm in, in my 50s now, so they're coming back to it. They're coming yeah. back to that um, time in their life when they did enjoy playing piano, mm -hmm. and they wonder why they stopped. Yeah. And so now they they have the expendable income. They're doing well in their yeah. careers, and and now it's okay. Let's get a piano yeah. and let's get back to it. Life got in the way. Yeah, yeah. I'm seeing a lot of people doing that, and I know that you guys are. Um, it's so always I'm, good to hear that people are buying new stuff. Yes. Just <laughs> to show you one other thought, and that is um, a good upright piano such as this, this, this is a Yamaha B3, can be a better piano than an older, mediocre grand piano. Okay. Maybe it doesn't have the action that the grand would have, so you know, that might be one, but you, but you can certainly... Many fine pianists play upright pianos. Right, right, right. But if the piano is built solid, it can have very nice depth. And that can be a better sound than. Look at that. Everyone watch that. Do that again. Yeah, because the notes don't, they just don't sound, right? So it needs to be regulated. It needs, that's, right. that's a, you know, something that everybody should do with their pianos. Maybe once every five years, if you're playing it a lot, you have a technician regulate it. Wow. So it plays like it did when it was new. But I just wanted to say that an upright piano can be a great sound. difference what a difference so I see you've got a white one over there this, this Yamaha looks pretty neat uh, it's a great piano this is pristine it sold very fast because of that it's just you know it was in a beautiful home which that doesn't mean anything other than the fact that if the home is beautiful the piano probably is too hopefully right not always but but it has something to do with when I said location, location earlier. Yeah, yeah. But action plays beautifully. This is six foot, so it's big. You hear that? Little yeah, sound? it's beautiful. And this, used, this was one of the earlier disc clavios. Yes, too, it was. Right? Floppy Look at this. disc, CD, 
<laughs> but, CD player. But the big innovation was this was the first piano right under here is a USB port. Wow. So I can play MIDI files off of a flash drive. So this was cutting edge. This is a 20 years old. 20 years old, Louis. Let's have a look on the inside of this. That's nice, nice. Look at that. So sounding board is beautifully clean. You know, the hammers, you can always push a key down and look at the edges of the hammers. And if there are grooves from, yeah, from the, playing. playing from the wire, from the hammer attacking the wire, that's gonna affect tone, you know, because it, yeah, yeah. you just wanna make sure you have a consistent sound. From one note to another. But, you know, this board is perfect. Um, there's no cracks. But, right. you know, which can happen because the sounding board is strips of wood glued together. Yeah. Um, it's in really good shape. It's beautiful. Bob wants to know recommendation for, recommendation a, for a used baby grand piano between six and seven thousand American dollars. Any grand? Ooh, tough one. Well, that that's actually kind of the hot spot in our lineup. Of price points, you know, six to seven thousand. Yeah. yeah, you know, a lot of our customers that come in the door, that's the price point they're looking at. Yeah, it, it, my first one was six, seven thousand there, thereabouts. There you go. Yeah, yeah, new that piano today is twelve to fifteen thousand, right? Just like this Yamaha <clears throat> five foot, five foot GV1 right here, yeah, is in that. $14,000 range. Okay. So anyhow, to answer the question, you know, it's either going to be a high-end piano, um, probably older, very probably, you know, American-made. Yeah. So an older Baldwin, um, Mason and Hamlin. Gosh, I, it's not even so much about the brand. It's, it's, you know, and then today, of course, many of the pianos from Asia, Young Chang, Samick, Yamaha, Kawaii, and many more, um, a 20 to 30 year old piano from any of those manufacturers, if it's new today, and it's like 15, 14, 15,000, and we think of the lifespan of a piano to be 50 years, if cared for, not that it couldn't be longer. It's all about how much you drive it. Yeah, right? exactly. But so if it's 20 years old, that's roughly half of the new life yeah. of a piano. So it should be kind of like half the price. Right, right. If that makes sense. Yeah, it does. So, so I think if it's, um, but the, the key is it's got to be in good condition. And again, either buy from a reputable music store or if you're looking at a pre-owned piano in someone's home hire a technician to go look at it right you just you wouldn't buy a car if you didn't know anything about the car you'd, you'd want somebody to look at it yeah you would just the same thing yeah so i hope i answered that yeah question. so i hope uh hope this has been enlightening for you guys um it's always good good to look at product and look at uh, these wonderful grands i mean 20 years old it's just amazing this thing how it's kept its uh, tonal quality, and um, I tell you what, let me let me play a let me play a little song. Give Steve a little break for for a minute, and um, <clears throat> send your questions to um, Vanessa because uh, she's there ready waiting. And we're going to put this down a little bit here so that I can uh, hopefully get the keys here. There we go. Look at that. I think we're getting there. I angled it down, but uh, I think that'll do. Let's do that song that I did last week.
It's, oh, the sense of that resonance there when I just lifted the pedal, pedal up. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's like um, it's like getting into a uh, a twenty-year-old car, right? That's that was expensive when it was new, and right. it's still got all the quality right. about the car. Yeah. To try and put it in that kind of analogy. I got it. It's got a squeaky bench, though. I got to take it. <laughs> I, I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was good. But that's that, that was good. That's that great Yamaha sound. It's a wonderful sound. It really is. It's just, and it's got all the tonal qualities, and it's bright, and mm -hmm. the bottom end is really nice and deep, yeah. which is beautiful. I think you know, getting back to the good used piano for was it sixty nine hundred? You know, yeah. The other thought with that is. Play it. Absolutely. And, yeah. You know, it doesn't matter what brand it is if you like it. Right. And it inspires you. You know, it's 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 going to be a good piano. Otherwise, it wouldn't sound like it does. Yeah. And it wouldn't inspire you. Yeah. So. And I found that when I was looking for a ground, a used ground, you know, I had to play it. I had to come in and play. And it's amazing when you go from one to another. You could have five at the same price point yeah. and they're completely different yeah. all of them and you will fall in love with one of them yep and you might like a piano more than somebody else too right. it's all about you yeah i have a question from um mike we have a franks. question from who mike franks mike franks yeah can steve comment on the life of a digital piano well in the last uh say 40 years mm. what about the wearing contacts of the keys. Okay, so the question is, what's the lifespan of a digital piano? Um, we're talking about maybe is it the same as a, an acoustic uh, in, in longevity? Well, no. <laughs> so when I was young and naive and selling pianos, I would incorrectly say to customers, they last just as long, <laughs> right? right? It's not true, and I apologize for that. <laughs> but so you have, you have things that electronically can wear in a digital piano. Right. So my flat out answer today, it doesn't matter what the quality of it is, but I'm Yamaha, so that's what I know. Right. 20 years. Yeah. You know, number one, manufacturers stop making parts. And True. then they get farmed out to parts companies that then supply the consumer. Yeah. Slowly they just disappear 20 years. And I know those electones, you know, I've got a 20 year old electone, a 20, 22 year old electone. You can't get parts for those, yeah. and you know the contacts will go. A pedal will start working. A note will start sticking, yeah. or there's a broken note. Right? I got a keyboard, the same thing. The bottom note is broken, yeah. um, and then you've also got speaker systems. You know, speak, speaker glow, go, goes on the right side. Are you going to replace yeah. it? Yeah. However, yeah. it could have been, you know, instead of spending five thousand dollars on a piano, you bought a nice digital for twenty five hundred. That makes you very happy. It's still a good investment. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Stephen Tynan wants to know. What Stephen, does, what does Steve think of Petrov pianos? Oh, we have one. We have a Where is it? We have a beautiful Petrov. Do you want to see? Yeah, that? let's see it. There we yeah. go. We got a question. So, the Steve, take and us to the Petrov. Uh, Master just wrote a note. Hey, Moat how are you? This is the second time he asked. I didn't ask it. Cause What's it that? It's just a funny question. How big should a room for a grand piano? Oh, that's a good question. That is. Did you hear that, Steve? I can. You've got issues carpeting, wood floor, tile, ceiling height, yeah. acoustical tile, beam ceiling. A lot of different variables. A lot of variables. You could have a 10 by 20 room that has great acoustics yeah. because of some of that. But I, I might be wrong, but I kind of think about the piano should be one quarter of the room. Okay, that's a good... You know that gives That's the a good standard. enough room to um, to resonate and to have its tone bloom within the room. Yeah. So that's that's my thought, just by experience. What about soundproofing rooms? Have you ever been in one of those? Mm -hmm. How's it, how is that? It can make a big difference. So is room, is it a good difference, or is yeah. it yeah? Because it deadens the sound of mm -hmm. the room, right? So yeah. the strings are so resonant. But that's really personal too. Some yeah. people like that kind of echoey big rambunctious tone and other people want that more intimate sound right again it's personal yeah yeah um so we could show this room real quick yeah yeah 
So this room is, oh boy, this is roughly 25 foot in length. Okay. And three, six, nine, twelve, about 14 in width. Yep. That look about right. Yep. That's a six foot Busendorfer. Okay. And you can see that that piano fits great in this room. So that's six foot. So if we do the square foot of the room, right. your, your math might be better than mine <laughs> on the spot. Yeah, so I'm, I'm in the middle of the room right now. Um, and then we've got another uh, five, foot, yeah. five foot dysclavia, right? Mm -hmm. So, so this, you, this room easily fits two pianos. Right. So this is 50 feet. 50 feet? Mm -hmm. yeah. 50 feet long, two pianos. Okay. I don't know if it's 50 feet. I think it's more like 35. Well, our old porch was 20 feet, so that's, I'm comparing it to that. Hmm. 40 feet? Possibly. But so there you go, you can see. 15 by 30. And it's 10 by. Would be 300. But you can see that these pianos are not lost in this room. Mm -hmm. And they both sound excellent. <laughs> Wood floor, a little higher ceiling, but it is acoustical tile. <laughs> I love that too. We're going to go to that piano yeah. Vuk in a minute, but uh, Steve, is, uh, do you have um, do you have the the the, the Disclavia TV hooked up? Um, I have to just get my phone. And the only reason I'm doing this is because you go get your phone, and I'll talk to these people because uh, I want to. <laughs> copyright might be an issue with this, um, but it is very very cool. And if Steve can get this going. Steve, I'm, 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 I'm concerned about copyright because this is yeah. going to be, it's original artist, so we might only do a little bit of it, but listen, if they get me to mute this at the end and, you know, I'll, 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 I'll mute it, but this is really cool technology. So not only do we have Disclavia Radio, which is a streaming service, um, but we also have Disclavia TV, so you can watch a concert and the piano will play. Okay. Have I got that right? So here's my app. Okay, hang on. Let me show you. Go to Disclavier TV site, and then choose a performance. Then I've got to go to the television, and I've got to select HTM1, because that's what my Apple TV is. Okay. That's the input. So there's Apple TV. It's my hometown there. Is it? It's almost. <laughs> Here's the video. And then I'm going to mirror it to Apple TV. So now we've got it coming out on here. Is that okay? I don't know. We'll find out. Okay. Yeah, I just want to see how this works. Cause... Oh, wow. Look at this. come back so you get both of this so it's playing the it's playing the grand right now but it's actually showing you the video on the screen
my goodness. You know, technology, it just blows you away, doesn't it? So, so that's Disc Livia TV. Yes, it is. And um, that was, let's give credit when credit is due. That was Under the Sea. Yep. Kiss the Girl, performed by the Rogers family. Fantastic. And it was actually recorded at the Georgia Aquarium. Wow. And something else that's cool, we supplied the two pianos. Get out. You mm -hmm. did? From our Atlanta store. That's fantastic. But I think that's so cool. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. So that was Dyslavia TV. Um, <laughs> had to show you because I've never been able to do that at my house. And I know that, Steve, you're going to come out and sort that out for me yeah, at some point. But, okay. um, you know, listen, if, if the chat... Uh, comments have to be disabled after this because I have to do something with copyright. Don't worry about it because I wanted you guys to see it and I think it's very, very cool to be able to see what Disclavia TV does. So not only just you've got radio but all of those original artists where you can see on the screen and then also you can see the piano keys going down. Incredible, incredible. All right, Petrov, we got a Petrov piano here. So, so what should play that new What, this one? Yeah, Bob wants Says Neil played the oh, Vuk wants me to play this. What, that's, what's, what song do you want me to play? Um, and there's another. I don't know if that, this question's uh, been asked. It was from Marco G. What do you see as the biggest differences between Yamaha and Kurzweil electronic keyboards? Biggest difference would be that the Yamaha's model F are after Yamaha acoustic piano sound. That's yeah. the biggest difference. And, I'm, and I'm not quite sure who Kurzweil is sampled from. Right. But Okay, and Richard Johnston asked how often would Steve recommend upgrading digital piano and do they depreciate value quickly? I don't know if you answered that. Well they definitely depreciate because of something that's newer and greater and cooler. Technology moves forward, you can't stop it. Right. So I think Myself, I see a window of about five years. You know, if I buy a digital piano today, five years from now, I can see a big difference in performance, yeah. feel. And then all the digital capabilities that come in, right? Yeah. That get added to it. Yeah. Yeah. But if you buy that digital and it's a good one, you can love it for a long, long time. Yeah. Even if something new, newer and shinier comes out. <laughs> He wants me to play Abelweiss, right? I think he said Abelweiss. Let's have a look at this. Get out of here. I just said another question too. What is the what is the best floor covering for the best acoustics? Wood? Question mark. If you like that nice big resonant sound, definitely a wood type floor, or even a floor like this, which is yeah. a laminate, but it has properties of of, of wood. Okay. Okay. 
different to the other one. Mm -hmm. Wind yeah. of change. <laughs> it, it's a super nice piano. They're, yeah. they're beautiful. Great craftsmanship, European tone. Um, this particular piano is 21 years old and it's five foot eight in length. 20 years old, 21 years old. Yeah. And look at the condition of it. Look at the shine on that. Is there a break in period on acoustic pianos? It's nice. <clears throat> yeah, breaking period, is the one? I think it has to do with, again, how many hours are on it. Yeah. But it just seems like that 20-year point is when a, if a piano's cared for, it, that's when it's like really has blossomed. Yeah, yeah. It just seems like. And I remember you coming to my house to see the, the Yamaha GA1. Remember that? Because mm -hmm. um, we talked about the Yamaha GA1 and I think you were surprised when you sat down to that piano, right? right. Just how the tonal quality that it yes. had. So, and that was just reaching about 20 years at <laughs> that point. It's amazing, right? Yeah. We just talked about that. And uh, it is, it's amazing. So that's, if you can't, you know, if you can't justify buying new, that's, that's a good time window to look for. <clears throat> yeah. 20 years old. So that's what you need to be looking at. So, someone asked earlier when you were playing that in there, in yeah. Is that the whole thing? Uh, on the white piano? Yeah. yeah that was ever Interesting for you to play the same song on an upright piano. On an upright? Yeah. Really? Okay. We can do that. Because that's what Chris Martin plays an upright all the time on stage. Although it's probably a digital piano that looks like an upright. Um, but let's see. Which one do you think, Steve? I think the V3. This one? Mm hmm. I'll move the back over. So let's have a look. Let's get down here to the keys. is I'll put the timestamps on <clears throat> so that you can do the same song with an acoustic grand and you can do it with this GA, G, GB3, B3, B3, sorry. <laughs> Up, right? I don't know if they noticed that I raised the lid. But I'm not sure. But it, that's what that change in tone was. Yeah, the it's lid, the lid line. was changed just a little bit. Yeah. But it really does make a big difference. Yep. Definitely. <clears throat> Definitely. 
So if I had this at home, this would be like this. <laughs> yeah, All and I know, I know Lee Cornwall, he has the front of the piano off as well, you know, because he has one of these. Um, so um, I think Louis, Louis just said that did um, Kawhi versus Yamaha, very similar tone, tonal quality. No, they, no. They're, they're individual. You know, yeah. The Yamaha sound is probably a little more crisp, a um, little brighter sound. You know, but they're, they're look, you can't, I, I, I got to be careful because I just, yeah. I'm a Yamaha guy. Yeah. And, but they're both great pianos. Yeah. I think Kawhi needs to be different than Yamaha because of Yamaha's strength and success. So how do they do that? A different kind of tone. Yeah, I'm with you. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, have we got any more questions? No? Okay. No, no more questions. No more questions. All right, so what we're going to do is um, we've taken a lot of t t Steve's time. Um, we're going to do a couple more songs. Just leave this for an hour. I'll be back again next week um, for the regular live stream. But I hope this has been very uh, educational, entertaining. Um, it's awesome to be able to see all this uh, fantastic product and to have, um, you know, the I'll mention the sponsorship agreement that we have as well with, with piano distributors. They've been unbelievable to work with and having this beautiful Yamaha Disclavia in my house, you know, I can't thank them enough. And so, Steve, thanks for your time again and, uh, and, and showing everybody this fantastic store that we, you have here. Thank you. And um, all right, so look, look what we've got here. <laughs> all right, somebody's going to request something. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this up here so that we can hear the tonal quality of this. I'm going to do it from here. They don't need to see me play. They can hear it, right? They want to hear it, I think. Amazing piano. And right there with the microphone with the sound board here. All right. Who's asking for what? Uh, sailing. <laughs> Somewhere in time. Uh. I feel like I need to play something really big, you know, on this thing.
One, one last one, right? One last one. Um, you all right? seen the wheels <laughs> it's like a, it's like an aircraft it's coming into land right look at that <laughs> oh awesome awesome all right everybody thank you so much for tuning in i know that's a little shorter than normal uh, steve thank you so much you're welcome really appreciate it's it fun. thank you for all the questions as well and uh you can see on the link below in the description of the video, you've got the website, pianodistributors.com, and you've also got Steve's cell phone number as well. Any questions, any information that you want on any of these products, and uh, more questions after the live stream, you know how to contact Steve, and you know how to contact me through the comments. Thank you ever, ever so much, everybody, for coming in here. Hope it was a lot of fun for you, educational, and see a lot of different products here on a Sunday afternoon. Thank you, everyone. And I love you and leave you, and I'll be back next week. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.